Hey guys, Pete here. Today's Game of Thrones Season 8 bonus video will be about where things are headed now that the Night King and the White Walkers have been defeated. I rewatched Episode 3 a couple times since my last video with an intention on doing a breakdown. Now I kind of feel more interested in the end of the story though, so I'm going to talk about that instead. For what it's worth, on rewatch, my feelings didn't change much. It was an amazing episode of television. Objectively, you can see when they decided that Arya would be the character to kill the Night King three years ago that they added clues to set it up. Based on what they said about the timing, it seems like they decided when they were writing season seven. And there's a pretty clear line from there. You can see where they made things like obviously Bran giving the cat's paw dagger to Arya and so on. Also, in episode three particularly, you can see where they picked out things from Arya's story to fashion the ending of the Night King around them. In other words, the Melisandre conversation in Season 3 had nothing to do with the end when it happened, but the ending was written to incorporate it. I'm okay with Arya being the one to kill the Night King in the context of that not being the twist that was promised. It was a twist and unexpected, and whether you liked how the Night King ended or not, it was clear that he would be ended. We knew he would be defeated and he was. Killing that threat off in the third episode of 6 indicates that the storytellers have something bigger they're trying to say, and I'm interested in that at this point. When I say the twist that was promised, I mean there has to be something bigger up their sleeve to follow Arya's kill, or else that will definitely feel disappointing to me. Opinions seem to be pretty split on episode 3, but as far as I could tell, episode 2 was really well received. I mean, personally, I loved it for the character moments, the dialogue, the story payoffs, and most of what I saw related to it was pretty positive as far as reviews went. This could be a good sign if we're moving away from the supernatural aspects and back towards the human conflicts in King's Landing. Let's not forget that just a couple weeks ago, George R.R. R. Martin said that the ending of the show wasn't going to be much different than the end of the books. And let's also not forget that this is a story that revolves around internal conflicts. With the White Walkers out of the way, I think we can make some broad strokes predictions, but we're pretty much in uncharted territory, so I'm just going off what we've seen in the past few seasons. I'm sure some of this will be wrong, but these are some of the things I'm thinking about after episode 3 dropped the idea on us that the supernatural threat had ended. Obviously, the Iron Throne and its current occupant are going to have to be taken care of. I have to confess that on a personal level, I don't hate Cersei being the big bad, at least as far as how it draws a comparison between humanity and a magical army of killing machines. As in, what's worse, a magical killing army or a human that uses that threat for their own personal gain. Plus, Cersei is a complicated character that isn't purely evil. I brought this up in several videos after the first trailer came out. Out, but still didn't really think we would be sitting here looking at that taking up the next two episodes. I like it as an idea, but I think it would be hard to make that work. And of course, I'm not condoning throwing out the themes and everything else that was going on in the story that got us here, but this is where we're at. I think there will have to be some serious heavy lifting involved in them pulling off an ending in the vein of people, we do it to ourselves, we destroy ourselves, or people, we're our own worst enemy. Cersei has ratcheted up her villainy by double-crossing everyone else, but she's basically alone at this point. She has Zombie Mountain, Kyburn and Euron at her side, and everyone expects her to die before the end of the series. I'm not sure where the twist that was promised comes from to make Cersei by herself versus everyone else feel more epic than the perceived struggle of the Long Night. We have four hours left of the story to go, and I think this probably indicates that there is going to be an epilogue segment in episode 6. I was never really sure if I liked this idea, but now it seems like they have to put something in there to fill up that space. I don't think it would be the whole episode, like it's an 80 minute episode, but at least some portion of that I think, and I think it could be good if it's done right. As far as Cersei being the big bad, I think it will have to rely on her upping her position. Right now, she probably has a better army, but I mean, she has to do something to make up for the fact that nobody else we're invested in is associated with her side. Besides some crazy badass twist we can't see coming, I imagine she could do this in two ways. Have someone who is currently on John and Danny's side become a turncloak, or get a hold of a valuable hostage. 
I think something along those lines will happen, but don't see a clear candidate for who the trader might be. Tyrion, Varys, or Sansa are the players that are left, and all of them have good reason not to want to team up with Cersei. I do expect that she'll die since the villain can't win, and I think that Daenerys will as well. That's been my prediction since before the season started, and nothing's really changed that so far. It's possible that Jon could go out instead of Danny, but I don't see them both living. I lean towards Daenerys because even though I like her story, I think it's problematic that her claim is her birthright and her dragons. Unless like Jon and the dragons die, and she ends up being the Queen of the Ashes, I think her story more likely ends in sacrifice than her being the last one standing. I think Jon will end up being the only one with a claim by default, and I do think it would be a terrible ending if he were the ruler when it fades to black. So I think it's more likely that he would walk away from the opportunity to become the King of the Seven Kingdoms, and this will open up the door to a different form of government. With only three episodes left, it's hard to see the political intrigue getting too complicated. I have a feeling that most of the story that isn't dedicated to getting rid of Cersei will involve Jon and Daenerys' struggles. This doesn't seem like it's enough in and of itself, since it's hard to imagine them actually turning on each other. I think they will end up together, whatever it is, they'll get that worked out, but then I think, like, one of them has to go. I do also think that it's been heavily foreshadowed in the show that she would become pregnant. I still think it's a likely part of the story, but I really don't know how that would play out. When you think about things like if Arya was the best candidate to kill the Night King based on her adventures and her training, there's a pretty reasonable conclusion that Sansa is the best character left to actually rule based on her story and what we've seen. This isn't a new idea. It's been out there for quite a while, and I do think that she's been prepared to do that, but I don't really like the idea of anybody sitting on the Iron Throne at the end. So I hope that her role will be in setting up the government rather than ruling as some kind of a monarch. And I think that extends to just the North in general as well. I mean, who knows what's even left of the North right now? But the idea of just breaking back up into separate kingdoms isn't that much of a move forward either. So I'd like to see something in the form of a government take the place of the system that we've seen has been pretty rough on the inhabitants of Westeros. There are two other Lannisters who are surviving. I'm really wondering why you would keep Jaime alive through that battle if it isn't to kill Cersei. So I'm presuming that that is his purpose. I could be wrong and that's fine, but it seems like he should have died in the battle if not, if he didn't have a purpose as far as the end game. I don't really see him turning back to Cersei. I mean, he could be the Turncloak, but that would seem a bit out of left field based on what we've seen transpire between him and Brienne since he's been in the North. I don't think Arya would be the one who would kill Cersei at this point because, like, she killed the Night King. It's not great as far as a reason other than she can't kill everybody, can she? I mean, it's not a story about Arya. She's just one of the characters in the ensemble. Bran is an absolute wild card because his story could just be over. Like, his story could be complete. There is a possibility that there's more to the White Walker aspect of the story, but I doubt there would be a full return of that threat in the little time that we have left. I think it's more likely that we get an indication that they could return rather than an actual return. And I'm not saying I like this. I'm, I'm not saying that I necessarily like any of this. I'm hoping that there's more to Bran's story and there's more to what's going on with the supernatural aspect of things, but I don't think we can say that that's definitely going to happen based on how much time's left and where we're at. It seems completely odd. Like, if nothing else, it seems completely odd that there's no balance. Like, yeah, Melisandre died, but the way that battle played out, it's almost like the Lord of Light made it happen, and good just defeated evil, and and I really don't want to get into all of that here, because you could talk about that for quite a bit. There's a lot of problems that come out of that. One thing I think is actually important, though, is, is that since the Night King was defeated in Episode 3, most of Westeros really felt no impact from the Long Night. They never went beyond Winterfell. So 
John and Daenerys did this heroic thing, set this all in motion. Arya killed this existential threat, but there's really no way to even explain that horror to the other people because they didn't experience it. So those are the major things I'm thinking about right now. I'll be interested to see what you guys think. There's got to be a twist. There has to be something that we don't see coming that they're planning for. So give me your ideas about that in the comments. I think there may be something to the fact that we saw Bran and Tyrion have a conversation or start a conversation that was cut off. I think Tyrion probably picked his brain about something that might turn out to be important. My initial reaction was is that through that he would find out about who John actually is because John isn't really going around telling people about it. But I don't know that that really changes what Tyrion would be up to. Like I don't know that that would make him change allegiance from Daenerys. So he might have picked up some information that he might try to use and that might backfire and cause problems. I mean, a lot of people have been talking about Tyrion betraying Daenerys. It seems unlikely on the surface. But then at the same time, one of these major characters has to have some kind of dramatic shift if these last couple episodes are going to be full of something that's going to keep us interested. So I'm going to end it there. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're thinking about, where you think the story's going. What do you think the big twist will be? The twist that was promised. Do you think that it's something that's already out there in the world of theories, or do you think there's something that's really unexpected coming? Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and follow along with the rest of the season. Thanks for watching, guys. I will talk to you soon.